Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to learn about synapses. We learned about neurons. We learned about the structure of neurons. We also learned how an action potential or electrical signal is passed through a neuron. Now, we will have to learn how this same action potential or electrical impulse is passed from one neuron to the other. So, suppose this is neuron 1. This is neuron 2. There is a gap between these two neurons. That gap is known as the synaptic cleft or synapse. So this electrical signal is supposed to pass from this first neuron to the second neuron from this gap known as synapse. And this passing occurs by two methods. One is chemical, one is electrical. We will be learning about chemical synapse in detail. Electrical one, I'll just give you a general idea about it. So let's start with chemical. This is the axon terminal or synaptic knob of the first neuron okay and this is the dendrite end of the second neuron so yeah this will extend into cell body and this is some other neuron this is the end of one neuron okay a zoomed in image so when action potential is passing through this neuron you know what happens sodium channels open sodium ions come in there is a change in polarity and then electrical signal is passed now when this happens, when action potential is short and it reaches the end, it stimulates the opening of calcium ion K channels. So when calcium ion channels are opened, calcium ions enter the first neuron. Okay, this is when there is an action potential. So calcium ions start, Ca2 plus ions, they start entering the first neuron and the entry of Ca2 plus ions, it stimulates certain structures known as vesicles to form and move to the synaptic knob okay so vesicles are certain structures which contain neurotransmitters okay now the main main element of a synapse is neurotransmitters so from the name you can figure it out neurotransmitters transmitters because they transmit the signal to this new neuron so neurotransmitters are very much required in our nervous system and sometimes due to the absence of these neurotransmitters we have several diseases. So the neurotransmitters you might have heard of some regular kind like acetylcholine, GABA, noradrenaline, adrenaline etc. So we're going to discuss, in about, uh, discuss about them too. So these neurotransmitters which are filled in synaptic vesicles they come to the terminal end of the axon okay and they bind to the axon's terminal okay suppose they're binding here and they release the neurotransmitters into the synapse this is the synapse or synaptic cleft neurotransmitters are being released here now these neurotransmitters which are released here they go and bind to the second neuron because this second neuron has certain receptors. Receptors are anything which recept things or uh, which sends things. Like suppose this neurotransmitter when it gets bound to this receptor here on the second, uh, on the postsynaptic membrane. Oh yeah, this is the presynaptic membrane because obviously pre and this is the postsynaptic membrane. Okay. So when they get bound to the postsynaptic membrane it causes some membranal changes that makes the action potential to start here so when action potential starts here sodium channels of the second neuron also open up and that's how the electrical signal is transmitted via chemicals known as neurotransmitters from one neuron to the other neuron you also know that there are two kinds of potentials one is excitatory and one is inhibitory Excitatory, let's assume acetylcholine. The same thing I explained. It gets bound to the second uh, synaptic membrane and it opens the sodium channel which polarizes, I mean depolarizes this neuron. So depolarization causes action potential, etc. But now there is one more neurotransmitter known as GABA which has inhibitory effects. So this inhibitory effect is basically when it gets bound, suppose this is GABA, and it gets bound to the postsynaptic membrane then sodium channels do not open up instead chloride ion channels open up which do not depolarize the neuron but 
hyper polarize it so in that way the electri- uh, the action potential is not released in the second neuron and there is an inhibitory response or the potential stops right there you might ask ki jo neurotransmitters abhi synaptic cleft mein hai what will happen to them so three things can happen to them one is they diffuse away the second one is they are degraded by enzymes which degrade neurotransmitters third thing is the presynaptic neuron can reuptake the same neurotransmitters basically recycle them so sometimes what happens is they are degraded by certain enzymes so when these enzymes increase in number the neurotransmitters decrease in number because they are constantly being degraded this causes a lot of diseases for example alzheimers the neurotransmitter responsible for alzheimers is acetylcholine because the enzyme that degrades acetylcholine increases and that's why the acetylcholine uh, neurotransmitters decrease in number which causes alzheimers and this can be prevented by taking drugs that inhibit the enzyme that inhibits the neurotransmitters we talked about chemical synapses let's talk about electrical so electrical may basically the presynaptic and postsynaptic membranes are very close to each other such that they're connected by these proteins forming a gap junction you learned about gap junction in structural organization they're used to attach to epithelial tissues similarly there is a gap junction here connected by proteins so electrical signal it directly passes to the second neuron so obviously this is a faster process so it's about 1 millisecond faster 1 millisecond faster so electrical synapse is pretty rare because most of the time it's a chemical synapse itself but yeah electrical synapse is also bidirectional because chemical synapse can only only work in one direction but electrical synapse is bidirectional so the synapse can go from i mean uh the potential can either go from here to here or here to here so the only thing you have to remember that electrical uh synapse occurs only when the two neurons are extremely close to each other So guys we're done for today's class thank you so much for watching i will also cater to your re- requests of videos i'll be making the video about how to study for boards when you're not preparing for neat and je and yeah so yeah i might be a bit delayed in my videos because i have to start studying if neat is happening on 13th so thank you for watching